Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and discuss atoms and their structure. So we're going to learn about their components and also the different regions in an atom. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I want to think about the two different regions of the atom. So the first part of the atom is the nucleus. This is found in the middle. If we look at the picture, it's kind of that gray sphere that includes both those red and blue spheres. So the nucleus is the very center of the atom. It's a very dense um, part of the atom is where we have a lot of mass in a very, very small area. And it also contains all the protons and neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus, we have the electron clouds. So this is basically any area outside of the nucleus. In my picture here, it's depicted by those green um, ovals going around the nucleus. So this is the area where electrons are likely to be. So there's actually something called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, which tells us we can't know exactly where electrons are, but we do know they're going to be found in this general space called the electron cloud. Okay, so let's go ahead and dig more into those three subatomic particles. So subatomic just meaning smaller than an atom particles. So the first one that we have is the proton. Protons are positively charged. We have that nice proton positive P going on there. Um, the mass of a proton is teeny, teeny, tiny, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. That means that I need to move the decimal point 27 times to the left and add a whole bunch of zeros in front of it. So a really, really small number in kilograms. And in fact, that number is so small, it's really a pain to work with. So chemists came up with a different unit called the atomic mass unit. And we went ahead and set the mass of a proton equal to one AMU or one atomic mass unit. So if I ever ask for the mass of a proton, don't tell me that mass in kilograms. Don't use your brain space trying to memorize that number. Just tell me it is one AMU. And then the abbreviation for proton is pretty simple. It's just the letter P. So next we have neutrons, and neutrons are neutral, meaning they have no charge. So just want to point this out. Neutrons are not negative. This is not a case where we have both ends, like we have protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral. So the way I think about it, they both have the same letters beginning both of those words. So neutrons have no charge, neither positive nor negative. Now the mass of a neutron is really similar to the mass of a proton. Again, it's that 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27, which we're not gonna worry about that in kilograms. We're gonna say it's about one AMU. And the abbreviation for neutron is just the letter N. Okay, so finally we have the electron and electrons are negatively charged. And there's no fun memory trick here. You just kind of have to memorize it. Electrons are negative. Now the mass of an electron is even smaller than that of a proton and a neutron. It's 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. So this means it's about a thousand times smaller than the mass of a proton and a neutron. So in the grand scheme of things, this mass really doesn't make a difference in the whole atom's mass. So what chemists say is that the mass of an electron is negligible, meaning it's small enough we can ignore it. So yes, electrons technically do have mass, but it's so teeny tiny small, we can ignore the mass that the electrons contribute to the overall atom mass. And then the abbreviation for an electron is a little bit different. It's E minus, that's because we have so many different words that begin with E in chemistry. So E minus for the electron. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope this helps answer any questions you have about the structure of an atom. Um, go ahead and get some practice in with this. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone. Bye.